Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and are having a flare-free day. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. Now, my channel is typically, typically, only about endometriosis and motherhood and everything in between, but I wanted to branch out into PCOS, which is also known as polycystic ovarian syndrome or also polycystic ovarian disease. Now, typically when it comes to a discussion around endometriosis, we often hear that PCOS is in the conversation mix around similar symptoms. Do they relate to each other? Are they the same disease, but just called different things depending on where you live? So in today's video, I wanted to do a deep dive into the differences between PCOS and endometriosis. I wanna talk about exactly what PCOS is versus what endometriosis is, the similarities with symptoms, but also the differences with the two and how each is diagnosed. Now this is going to be a longer video, but I think it's really important to differentiate between the two and have a better understanding on how it can impact our body. Any new or changing or recurrent symptoms are really important to bring up to your doctor. So first, let's dive into what is PCOS. So PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome, or also known as polycystic ovarian disease. Now, PCOS is the dysregulation or the lack of proper communication in the endocrine system, which basically involves your hormones and how they operate in the human body. Now, I was watching a YouTuber here because I'm an endometriosis patient and not a PCOS patient, so I really wanted to get some more information on how they properly described PCOS. And shout out to this YouTuber who provided a great explanation of what PCOS is with a drawing. So I'm going to approach my video in the same way, but a huge shout out to that YouTuber who really put it into proper terminology and a visual for those to learn. So in a body that doesn't experience PCOS, you would have your brain that would send hormones to your ovary and the ovary has our little eggs here waiting to be released for ovulation. So the brain sends those hormones to the ovary, which talks to them to say, hey, it's okay to release and provide ovulation to kick in now. And once ovulation happens, the ovary would send more hormones to the brain, creating a beautiful cycle here that ultimately allows our period and menstrual cycle to take place. In a body with PCOS, instead of the brain sending hormones in a direct route to the ovary, what would happen is that those hormones kind of get lost in translation and take some time to actually get to where they're supposed to be at the ovary. During that time and that long period where those hormones are taking their sweet time to get to the ovary, the ovary is really waiting and really like, where are you hormones and why aren't you here yet? During that process of waiting is really trying to make that ovulation process happen. Ovary isn't getting the right signals from the brain to start that ovulation process. In the meantime, while the ovary waits to get these hormones directly to it, it begins to make a large amount of follicles within the ovary itself. Follicles are small sacs of fluid that are typically surrounding the outside layer of the ovary. These follicles contain immature eggs. When the time comes during the menstrual cycle, that follicle has grown to a specific size and ruptures and produces a mature egg to be fertilized. In that body with PCOS, there are multiple follicles that are being produced by the ovary waiting for those hormones to reach it. Now, when the hormones finally reach that ovary that's been waiting so long for it to arrive, one of those follicles that were being created in the ovary has the ability now to be released and to be part of that ovulation process. So really important to stress that you can ovulate with PCOS. It just might take some time and not be in that typical 28 to 31 day cycle that you hear of when it comes to quote unquote normal periods. So again, once that ovulation happens, the ovary sends hormones to the brain directly this time. They're not going in a crisscross applesauce way. And so those other hormones are finally sent to the brain to start the cycle all over again. PCOS has a huge relation to hormone fluctuations and the excess amount of androgens, which are the male hormone. Those with PCOS have a higher level of androgen than those without PCOS. When we try to investigate our pain and discomfort in our pelvic zone, um, typically to investigate if we have endometriosis or PCOS, those imaging techniques may show fluid-filled structures that medically may be called cysts. 
cysts. Endometriosis can produce cysts known as chocolate cysts or ovarian endometriomas. And I talk about that in a recent video. So yes, endo can produce cysts. When we talk about PCOS and we think of, oh, it must have a cyst involved because it's in the name. You're not talking necessarily with PCOS as a huge cyst waiting to just rupture in the ovary. We talk about these fluid filled structures. We're looking at this imaging with PCOS as those large amount of follicles that have been developed in the ovary. So it's not a huge cyst. It's just little tiny little pockets of fluid filled structures or sacs that are in the ovary and typically form around the periphery of the ovary forming like what's called a black pearl necklace on imaging. So I hope that makes sense. I'll post an image of the difference between a cyst and what would present as PCOS in the next couple of slides just to see a visual difference. Overview, PCOS is a hormone disorder that basically relates to the brain and the ovary not communicating well with each other. It causes a lot of follicles to be developed in the ovaries and a lack of those being released at a proper time in the cycle. It relates to the excess amount of the male hormone androgen, basically meaning you have more androgens or the male hormone in your body with PCOS than without. And it also relates to high insulin levels and a lot of other things in between. So that's basically what we've covered so far around PCOS. When it comes to endometriosis, unlike PCOS, endometriosis is a full body systemic inflammatory disease. So PCOS relates more to the ovaries and the function of the ovaries and the hormones. Whereas when it comes to endometriosis, there is a lining within the uterus known as the endometrium. It's that inner lining of the uterus that sheds every month during our period. Endometriosis is when tissue similar, not the same, but similar to that inner lining of the uterus grows outside of the uterus. It causes a lot of pain and discomfort, very similar to the symptoms with PCOS, and we'll get into the symptom relation in a second. Endometriosis, again, is a full body disease. That tissue that is similar to the uterus tissue can grow on every organ in the human body, it can grow in the diaphragm, it can grow on our bowels, it can grow on our reproductive system, including the ovaries and fallopian tubes. But just something to keep in note that PCOS is more in relation to the ovary specifically, whereas endometriosis is more of a full body disease. There's more of a hormone disorder when it comes to PCOS than in relation to endometriosis for what we know right now with research. Let's jump into the symptoms and how they relate and differentiate between one another. So I do want to recognize that this is not a conclusive or full list when it comes to symptoms. Everyone's body is different and unique and the symptoms with PCOS may range for you. So when it comes to PCOS, here are some examples of symptoms that may come forward with the disorder. Menstrual irregularities. So obviously that diagram that I showed earlier in the video, it demonstrates that hormones take a long time to get to that little ovary waiting to release an egg. So menstrual irregularities happen because hormones aren't necessarily communicating to that ovary to release an egg. This leads to periods not happening every 28 to 31 or 35 days. It's not on a normal cycle. There's a lot of fluctuations when it comes to when a period might happen, making it very difficult for somebody with PCOS to see in the future or to plan ahead for when their period might arrive. Some individuals have shorter periods, some have longer, or some may have no periods whatsoever or an absent period. Some individuals may also experience heavy bleeding or prolonged menstrual bleeding with PCOS. Elevated levels of androgens, so again, that male hormone, this can lead to symptoms such as excess facial hair, typically in areas around the jawline, chest, abdomen, or back. Acne, so PCOS-related hormone fluctuations can produce acne on the skin. Baldness or hair thinning can also be a symptom of PCOS. Now, I am not someone to talk about this. I don't experience PCOS, but I do want to come on here and just say that I can only imagine how difficult it is to have symptoms related to this. I'm coming on here to let you know how beautiful and wonderful and talented and strong and just a hu beautiful human being that you are. I, again, I can't talk to that experience, but from a person to person, whoever's watching this, I want you to know that your symptoms of PCOS or endometriosis don't define who you are. Although it's so hard for me to, again, talk about it or, or live in your shoes, 
I just wanna say that I am here for you. I'm here to listen. I'm here to be a safe space for you to air your concerns in the comments and just know that you are safe on this channel. There are symptoms that come up with these disorders like endometriosis, PCOS, adenomyosis that if only other people knew what we went through and that these symptoms don't define who you are. Polycystic ovaries on ultrasounds are a telltale sign of PCOS. So what this means is on imaging, ovaries may seem more enlarged and contain again those small follicles um, around the periphery of the ovary. Some individuals with PCOS may not have polycystic ovaries. Additional symptoms of PCOS include weight gain or difficulty losing weight, mood changes, skin changes, and infertility concerns. The main cause of concern when it comes to fertility and PCOS is the lack of consistent ovulation that occurs. PCOS can also cause painful periods or discomfort around the time of your menstrual cycle. Let's dive into the symptoms associated with endometriosis. The number one leading um, symptom of endometriosis is uh, extremely painful periods when it comes to your menstrual cycle, chronic pelvic pain, pain during sex or intercourse, painful bowel movements or urination, leg pain. Leg pain was the very first symptom of my endometriosis journey, so I'd be curious to hear if leg pain is something that you suffer with with endo. Fertility concerns as well, fatigue, brain fog, really hard to concentrate or find the right words when you're trying to think of something, lung collapses or difficulty breathing, especially if endometriosis tissue uh, adhesions or stroma are within the diaphragm or on the lungs. Shoulder pain, again, that relates to endometriosis tissue in the diaphragm. Again, this is not an exhaustive list, but I will post a video all about some symptoms related to endo. And my channel is fully endometriosis right now, so feel free to check out any other videos in relation to endometriosis symptoms. But you can definitely see that there are similarities with PCOS and endometriosis, including fertility concerns, painful periods, irregular periods. But when it comes to both PCOS and endometriosis, there are distinctive symptoms that relate to either one that can help us differentiate between the two. Again, really important to recognize that everyone's experience and symptoms are unique and different when it comes to both PCOS and endometriosis, you may have no symptoms whatsoever, or you may experience excruciatingly painful symptoms. Everyone's body is different. Feel free to comment down below any that I've missed in both the PCOS realm and endometriosis realm. How is PCOS and endometriosis diagnosed? Typically with PCOS, there is the Rotterdam consensus scale lead into a suspected diagnosis for PCOS. The Rotterdam criteria typically defines PCOS by including two to three of the following criteria. Area. Irregular menstrual cycles, where ovulation does not occur regularly at all. Clinical or biochemical signs of increased androgens in the human body. So elevated androgens, so the male hormones in the bloodstream, acne, and hair growth. Polycystic ovaries on ultrasounds. Ultrasounds, MRIs, CT scans can all be used to provide a suspected diagnosis for endometriosis. Now, research and clinical practices are getting a lot better when it comes to endometriosis diagnosis. Sometimes they can provide a definitive diagnosis for endometriosis based on ultrasound alone, but some Sometimes endometriosis likes to hide on imaging. They like to hide behind structures. They're like, don't look at me, I'm camera shy. A negative ultrasound result doesn't mean that you don't have endo. It just means that that endo is hard to detect on imaging alone. Typically the gold standard of diagnosing and treating endometriosis is through laparoscopic surgery by fully removing the endometriosis tissue itself by an endometriosis specialist. So. Differences there with PCOS and endometriosis when it comes to diagnosing them. PCOS is more ultrasound and imaging techniques as well as a blood test to confirm a diagnosis. Whereas endometriosis is more of the use of the naked eye to see tissue firsthand via surgery. So differences there, but again, we're coming a long way with ultrasound and imaging for endometriosis diagnosis. I'd be curious to hear down below how you were formally diagnosed with PCOS or endometriosis. Finally, what I wanna talk about is the treatment of both PCOS and endometriosis. Treatment options are unique and specific to you and your journey. So if you are opting for medications to help with your pain management, that's one option and natural ways also exist as well. For both PCOS and endometriosis, there are lifestyle modifications that we can do to support 
our overall health and well-being. So endometriosis is more related to inflammation. So when it comes to diet and nutrition, we can focus on anti-inflammatory food. The same goes with PCOS, but um, more in relation to managing insulin levels in the bloodstream. I'd be really curious to know if you've changed or modified what you eat in a day um, to kind of manage both PCOS or endometriosis symptoms. I know with endo, coffee and alcohol can cause a spike in painful flares. I'm very curious around PCOS and the experience of pain that you have with different types of food. I don't suffer with PCOS, but I'd be very curious if certain foods cause a, a spike in chronic pain for you. Medications. Now, again, this is so personal and so dependent on your journey. When it comes to endometriosis, pain management treatment, Birth controls do not um, solve the issue. There is still tissue that exists throughout the body. Again, it's a full body disease, but birth controls can kind of mask the symptoms. So we have the endometriosis tissue in the body just living and existing the way it does and causing pain and discomfort. And birth controls come in and kind of blanket over that pain and discomfort, leaving the tissue still there and it still exists in our body, causing us to still live with endo, but the pain and discomfort associated with that disease is masked by birth control. And a lot of individuals are prescribed birth control to manage their pain and discomfort and regulate their periods. Um, but just something to note, it is not a full on cure for endometriosis, but it does provide pain management for those looking for it. Uh, same birth control option for PCOS. Again, it does help regulate menstrual cycles, um, but again, it is a band-aid solution when it comes to the treatment of PCOS. Comes to PCOS, there are medications on the market. Again, talk to your doctor or a medical practitioner before changing or modifying any medications that you're having. But there are medications to address the uh, larger level of androgens in the bloodstream. This can help reduce symptoms associated with excessive hair growth and acne. There's other medications too that exist to help regulate ovulation, suppress the androgen hormone in the body. Fertility treatment exists for both endometriosis and PCOS, such as ovulation induction for PCOS, intrauterine insemination, that is like such a tongue twister, but IUI exists and IVF also exists for both options. Again, talking with a specialist related to both endometriosis and PCOS is highly recommended. Family doctors are a great starting point, but if you're in a first initial appointment or discussion, it's really important to see if there is any experts in your area or surrounding centers that you can talk to to gain more information around PCOS and endometriosis. It's hard for somebody on the outside to recognize what we go through on a daily basis, especially while dealing with chronic pain and discomfort. And it can be really lonely and isolating. But again, I want you to know how incredibly proud I am of you. I'm gonna get teary eyed. It's happening. Anyways, I'm gonna stop there because I'm just gonna start crying. But just know that there is a difference between PCOS and endometriosis. There are also similarities between the two, but I hope that this video has outlined that they are different. They do both deserve quality research, funding, and awareness for both. Yes, they can interact and exist in the same body together. So somebody can have PCOS and endometriosis, as well as other disorders that are impacting their body. And those voices deserve to be heard too. PCOS deserves a space to be heard and researched and funded. And endometriosis deserves a space to be researched and funded. So keep that in mind. Keep spreading awareness around both. It's so important for those suffering with the disorder, especially if they're dealing with a flare-up or just want to talk openly. There are so many ways to support those in our lives living with chronic pain associated with endo and PCOS. But I hope this video has helped gain a little bit more insight. Can't wait to see some of your comments and symptoms and stories in the comments down below. And again, so proud of all of you.